All right, and welcome back, everybody. Let's continue. Fuck. <clears throat> Skip all this. I figured it might be useful for some reason to actually conversate with people. I'm not, I'm sure she'll catch up with us. Avon looks out across the lake with the thousand mile stare. He says nothing. Got a problem, says Ivor. <clears throat> the whole place is flooded. We could try to walk the muddy parts, but it's going to be slow going. We could try to float the caravan across the lake, but we might tip or get stuck. Or we might we could just go around the whole thing, but no idea how long that'd take. What do you think? <clears throat> um Let's pay some locals to help. The locals become a lot more helpful. When you swallow your pride and start offering food for help crossing the river, they give you a small fishing boat to borrow to show you the area of the best chance of making it across. You hope your luck holds out as you launch ashore. Launch from the shore. Bah. <clears throat> Despite, or you suspect, because of your vigilance, the locals from Sigur home don't try anything underhand. <clears throat> Damn it, my throat. As you take take you in their small boats to the other side of the lake over several trips, you leave them with a generous amount of food and row back their way towards town. You hope it's worth it to buy some space from the bellower, who will have to drag his armies through mud and foot. Stifled screams failed to overly concern anyone. <clears throat> it was only a matter of time before the expectant mother gave birth. The caravan is simply excited by the first sign of blue knife. Call for a day of celebration. When the baby cries, replace the mother's. The entire caravan cheers. You raise a drink to the family, saying, Tomorrow we rest and feast to the strength and long life. Again, everyone cheers, glad to forget their worries for a small time. Fuck. <clears throat> you think I would have gotten some fucking boost in morale or something? As you're about to head off to sleep for a night, Ona pulls you aside. I have a couple concerns I wanted to speak to you about, he says, in private. You find a nice, pl quiet place to talk to. Not a good idea. What's on your mind? How old do you know the people traveling with us? How many strangers are in the caravan now? Is this about Ickle? That's an obvious example. I've been watching folks since I joined you. Your companions from Skogger, they're loyal. I mean, it's pretty clear they die to protect you. I suppose I'd do the same. What about the Varl? You don't even know these warriors. <clears throat> You're telling me they have no problem following a man's orders now? After everything that happened in Nynertoft... I trust Ivor to handle it. He's fearless, I'll give you that. But look at him. He's run ragged. He can't be there all the time. What happens the first time the Varl don't want to do what they tell them? If Cummer just gave the word, I guarantee at least a half would follow. 
let's be honest, they could take this caravan by force at any time if they wanted to. What do you suggest? I suggest growing some balls instead of hoping it all works out, Rook. They're not the biggest problem, though. There's a mender with us, a mender who pulls lightning out of the sky and tells us what to do and where to go. He actually does not. Myself, I think we lucked out when his mentor didn't show up at Sigurholm. Avon's just the apprentice. What in the depths is a master capable of? Think about it, Rook. What do you really know about Avond? I've heard they were found practically dead in the middle of nowhere when the dredge started showing up. Then an enormous serpent shows up an iron topped after tearing the world in half, takes one look at Avon and bolts. Suddenly they need our help instead of the Mender Council. How does that make any damn sense? I'm grateful for what you've done to get us this far, Rook, but I've always been about trust. <clears throat> I think it's time to part ways, so to speak. Nothing personal. Yep. I knew it. I mean, it's not something you can really avoid. Time to fight some fuckers. You pal. Hey, how about fuck you? What? That's not the person I was going for. You fucking ass hat. Boop. Gotcha. That was easy. Where is Alette? Shouts Ivor tearing through the nearest bandit. But you've already you're already hobbling into the deep woods where they've disappeared, ignoring the battle raging behind you. In a haze of pain you start to think you've lost their tracks. Then you hear Alette screaming in the distance, followed by silence. You tear through the trees. In the in a small clearing, Alette lies with her back against the trees, her hands and her clothes are covered in blood. She stares vacantly ahead, unblinking. Beside her is the body of Onif. An arrow buried in his eye, right eye, as if placed there by hand. She looks in your direction, and then at Onif. I killed him, she says. Fuck. 
No, I'm... I'm not hurt. I had no choice. Dad, your chest, you're bleeding. Suddenly she's at your side putting pressure on the wound. I can, I can fix this. Where's my needle? Oh, Leaf, anyone? Ivor, I found them. Just as your sight goes black, you see Avon, Ivor, and Alette standing over you. He's going to make it? Your eyes open at the sound of Alette's voice. Normally a wound like that. I only hope I did enough. I'll survive. Dad! Alette stops herself from hugging your bandaged chest, pulling your head to her instead. The words come out easier than you expected. Olif? It's a good thing Avon was here. She's going to pull through, though. We managed to kill most of those tra traitorous sons of bitches, and the rest fled into the woods. There were a lot of people I couldn't save. You did everything you could, Avon. Nobody expects you to raise the dead. Avon frowns deeply, putting a hand on his forehead. When did no one have to do this, Rook? He was talking to you right before it happened? He thought my leadership would get us killed. Utter bastard. All this time we had no idea. <clears throat> Echo killed a good half dozen Onef's men by himself. He told me Onef was running from fo running Frostvillar the whole time. He left Frostvillar behind when he saw a better opportunity. Guess that relationship is over. Echo was always just a barking dog you put in the yard to find out who your enemies are. It was no accident Onef went after those of us from Scrogger. <clears throat> he must have thought with us must have thought with us gone he'd take the banner and the rest of it would fall in line or at worst that they take all the supplies for themselves and leave the rest as dredge bait we have to be more careful we can't just let anyone in the caravan anymore where do you draw the line Ivor? I don't know Rook I really don't None of this changes the fact that Bellor is out there somewhere following us. That swamp around Sigurholm might buy us some time, but we've got to keep moving. Your body aches all over, but Ivor is right. The road calls the caravan is already starting to pack up camp. Hello, senor. Look who it is. Still not dead? Now are things, Rook. I can never guess with you, Echo. I heard you helped drive off the traitors when Onef attacked. And it leaves me always wondering, what's your deal? I'm not so hard to understand. Why don't you try asking instead of telling? Why didn't you warn us about Onef? Didn't I? How many times did I have to call him a traitor before you got the message? What did you want me to say? Watch out, Onef's going to murder your whole family? He didn't fill me in on the details. He always, he was always like that. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if he tried to convince you to off me, but listen, I don't need to know, so keep it to yourself. You're welcome to stay with us. Had no plans to go anywhere, so you're going to let me walk around with my own axe and everything? Doesn't mean I'm not watching you. I can accept that you're a good man. Why did you stick with him? I don't know, Rook. Family makes you do weird things. You know what the worst part is? We became kin when you married my sister. She died of fever one night, but she didn't. She wasn't sick. He killed her. I don't know why he did it. Maybe he just felt like it. I was so furious, I got so angry that I, I wanted to, him to beg. I could kill him without a second thought, but that, that wasn't enough. I wanted him to feel sick about it, puke his guts out. And somehow, somehow that turned into, over time, he never cared. And I gave up, <clears throat> and I did what he wanted. Don't know how it happened, but when I attacked you in Frostwiller, guess I'll say it wasn't my idea. Need to get going. And I needed to take a piss. You're not the only busy man around here, you know. <laughs> What the fuck? Let's look at my heroes. Might be able to upgrade somebody. Get them some decent shit. Ah, goddammit. 
trigger me. Boop. Got it. Strength resist, three armor, one drawing aggro, three strength. Odleaf. 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 <clears throat> How's the wound? You notice Odleaf wins as she rises to greet you. It's doing a lot better. When I saw it happen, I thought for sure. Oh, well, I'm really glad you're. You would have missed me, Rook. She smiles. Without Avon, that's all you could have done. Instead, you'll have to put up with my crap a little longer. It still aches like you wouldn't believe, though. Oh, maybe you would. Heard you got a, took a stabbing yourself. I guess things could have gone worse. What is your husband doing? Oli's smile, smile falls like a dead weight. I'm sorry, Rook. I'm sorry I didn't tell you sooner. He died a Niner Tuft. It just didn't seem like the right time to, you know, put that burden on you. I should have said something. It's been lonely without him. I'm glad to have a let around. And you, Rook. What do you think about the caravan? You mean, should we start kicking people out? That's a tough one. Usually I'd be the first to give you a dirty look for suggesting it. On the other hand, I got a sword in my back. Odley thinks for a long moment before sighing. Don't send anyone away. Just make sure nothing happens to Alette. I'll let you get some rest. I'll take you up on that. You know, you're welcome to keep me company. When I'm a little more awake, I mean. I'll talk to you later. She wants to bang sexticles! a day and then we're leaving because I got four days oh god I don't have enough time oh fuck <clears throat> it's not looking good again is that a village or is that woods that's a village some clansmen have discovered a large patch of wild fruit. Uh, gather as much as you can. Gather what you can, you tell the others, saying, Fold that any amount of food to your stores. Though a few, few people can become a little drunk from the fermented fruit, nobody becomes sick. Sweet. here are completely oblivious to the destruction that is coming. All we've seen is some dark figures far off, they tell you. Aside from a few young families, they're reluctant to pick up their things and join you. Fifteen clansmen. Whoopity doo. Ooh, hello. Thank fucking Christ. Okay. 
Time to leave. Got a week's worth of rations. Should be fine. Even though we're heading into the wood. More supplies missing, a woman by the wagon says to you. And look, tracks, right here they look like children's footsteps. But my husband and I follow them in the wilderness a ways. They meet up with some adult tracks, no telling how many. Some scouts, anybody following you? You round up some volunteers who depart quietly. They return that evening and report a few tracks that ultimately lead nowhere. Somewhere, Someone may be trying to hide their tracks, but you don't have the time to continue to s fuck. Are you fucking kidding me? Three days worth of fucking supplies! <sighs> Explain yourselves. Fuck! Imposing godstone of Beorulf approaches. His severe visage makes you feel like he's watching you even now. The caravan spreads out, happy to be free of the confining forest in the open fields. Hogan pulls you aside to show you some red berries growing in the ash trees that look like it was chopped down long ago. Join Hogan in collecting berries. Would have been nice if that helped with the food problem. there. Two more days. We can make it. We've just got enough time. Rainovic. Rainovic. Come on, Rainovic. A boy has gone missing from the caravan, along with a good number of supplies. The boy's younger brother begins to sob. Some men in the woods made us. Said we had to give them food or they'd kill us and don't tell anybody. My brother went over there. He points. Send the younger brother and ambush them the next trade. That evening, the other brother sets out with a bag of supplies silently surrounded by fighters. Within an hour, the sounds of skirmish ring out. Soon, both boys return along with the cheerful fighters laden with supplies. Fuck yes. That is what I'm talking about. Rainvik is more of a smattering of farmhouses than a proper town. Though judging by stray dredge stalking through empty fields, it is barely even that anymore. Reynovic sounds remarkably like Reykjavik comes and goes in a long series of farmhouses abandoned and crawling with dredge the farmers have probably fled to Boersgard you try to hurry past but are eventually spotted dredge start ambling in your oh 
What is that? Points out Odleaf. Up near one of the longhouses in the distance, a large person, clothes seemingly covered in blood, is cursing loudly and stumbling about. He staggers into the longhouse, laughing. Rush to help. Okay. Let's do this shit. Welcome to my mead house. Sigbjorn, House of Mead. 
I wasn't expecting a varl this far south or this drunk. I can see that. These are people huddled in there are people huddled in the corner of the meat hall looking at on with uneasiness. Who are all these? Who are your you people? No no, they're friends. They made this place, it's not really mine. You lord dredge back into a room full of unarmed people? What is wrong with you? Come on, I saved everyone in here. They shared some fine drink, the best drink. Wait, I was saving your ass. Remember that part? If you knew you'd come up here, you could have told me. What do we do with this guy? Anyone here is welcome to join us. The townspeople show you a huge stock of barrels filled with quality mead and help you haul them back to the caravan. I'll miss this place. Good memories. Whatever you say, buddy. Fuck me. That is annoying. With some help, you gather up the cast of mead and head back to the caravan. Sebjorn and the other survivors in tow. The caravan gives you a boisterous varl, gives the boisterous varl a large berth as you set off the Boar's Guard. Ugh. What did I do? Sigurd wakes in a pool of his own sick. Why am I surrounded by small people? The other clansmen let him sleep off his own drunken stupor. On the ground, and this morning he's paying the price. Help him recover. Reluctantly, your clansmen offer any food or drink that he can scrounge up together for the moaning barrel. When one offers the thin mead, he pushes it away. In fact, take this away from me, he says, handing you a massive mead stein. Eventually, Sigurdborn comes to you. I won't get into details, he says. I was supposed to bring the castorate from Reynavik back to Borisgard. I drank maybe half by accident. Point is, Sigurdborn continues, you don't tell anybody about what happens and I won't tell anybody about the meat you got, okay? Trust me on this one. Agree and get back to travel. old man sits astride an overgrown portion of the trail. You lost, you ask? He adjusts his leather strap on his head and says, no, are you? He jumps up and shuffles toward the caravan, his tattered clothes revealing no weapons. Well, I've seen better, the old man says, peering into the supply wagons, but I'll join you. He stands next to a fighter, throws his beard over his shoulder, and puffs out up his chest. The fighter grins and the stranger exhales, asking, what are you waiting for? Lead the way. You're welcome to join the caravan if you keep pace. Keep pace, the old man puffs through his mustache. No fleeter than old Unar. And husbands, mind your wives, I'm cursed with golden tongue. Not silver. The caravan enjoys a good laugh as they start to moving once again. Scout returns with a nearly frozen child. I almost stepped on her in the snow. Looks like she must have been running from something. He says, patches of blue model her pale skin, but her chest rises and falls ever so slightly. Even just carrying her along could kill her in a state like this, says a woman. Could be in danger. Keep moving, but let the healers tend to her. Fighters stay alert in any threat while the caravan moves on. The healers rub the girl's arms and legs under blankets to no avail. An hour later, one healer approaches you with the tear in her eye. She says nothing, only shakes her head. God damn it. Fuck you. As we pass steep cliffs, the sprawl of Boersgard comes into view. <coughs> Fuck. A city of contrasting rich and poor, opportunity and gamble. Our best hope for salvation or our graves. Come on, you can make it. Fuck. Chapter 7, The Slayer and the Slain. Fuck. 
Finally, you arrive at Boersgard, where the walls stretch for miles in both directions, and are littered with bodies of dredge, varl, and men. Excuse the mess, shouts a voice from above the gates. Looking up, you spy a striking varl, his face wreathed in matted black hair. Movement at the gate catches your eye. Dredge are still banging at the gate doors without luck. Let us in, you shout. See everyone pushes past. I won't be hearing the end of this for a while, he says, before yelling up. Open up, Bulvark. They dug me out of Reykjavik, you hear? A laugh echoing in the wind, uh, wind as the doors creak. A dozen armed men, led by a massive varl, make quick work of the dredge and usher you into the city. You may be interested to know they brought a mender. You didn't go to get a mender. Where's the mead? Severin shrugs apologetically. I guess the mender will do. Either way, we've got a chance now, and we're, or we're completely screwed. I'm Rook. We've come a long way, some as far as Skogger. Are you in charge here? In charge of the governor, I suppose. Listen. If you have something to tell him, say it now, otherwise you're on your own. I don't care where you go, but stirring up trouble is probably the only reason you'll see me again. It won't be to talk. Mender, come along. We're going to see the governor. Bolverk and Sigiborn leave with Avond, who goes willingly, signaling that he's fine. Fane. Fuck. This is just like Frostfiller all over again. This is nothing like Frostfiller. The one in the bearskin is probably leading the ravens. Raven? Is that good or bad? It depends on who they're working for. Hopefully it really is the governor, not someone trying to strong-arm their way into his seat. I guess we wait for Avon to tell us if he comes back. I'm not worried about Avon. I'm worried about the army of refugees we've brought who don't belong here. You're probably right. Nobody uttered a nice thing about Borsgard, so what now? We ought to go to the docks to see what our options are in case we need to leave quickly. Did you notice the city guards when we came in? What guards? I have the raven. I have a feeling the ravens are all they've got left. Something serious went down. And when Bellower gets here, he's going to walk right through this place without even breaking a stride. Let's keep that to ourselves for now, so the docks. Okay, that's going to do it here for today. Hope you guys enjoyed watching and join me for the next one. I think I'm going to be finishing it out all in the next episode. So, I'll see you.